This video describes the Curve Fitting Statlet. It's new in StatGraphic Centurion version 17. The Curve Fitting Statlet assists analysts in fitting a model involving a single dependent variable y and a single independent variable x. The Statlet toolbar controls allow dynamic transformations to be applied involving powers of x and or y. Prediction and confidence limits may be added around the fitted model. Interactive lowest smooths may be applied to the scatter plot of y versus x. And finally, the effect of outliers on the fitted model may be assessed by dragging points to new locations. I've loaded into the StatGraphic Centurion data book a file showing the results of a stability study. It comes from the famous book by Draper and Smith called Applied Regression Analysis. There are two columns in the file, the first named weeks, showing the number of weeks since production of 44 samples of a product. The second column, called chlorine, shows the percent of available chlorine in each of the samples. To launch the statlet, I'll go to the main menu and select Statlet's Curve Fitting. The Y variable is chlorine, the X variable is weeks. When the statlet window opens, it will start by fitting a straight line to the data. You can see the equation of the line at the top of the graph. You can also see several interesting statistics. You see the root mean squared error, which measures the standard deviation of the residuals. That's the deviation around the line. You see the R squared statistic, which is currently 74.83%. That's a measure of how well the model fits the data. The higher, the better. And you see a p-value. Any p-value less than 0 0.05 would indicate a statistically significant fit. There are several options on the control bar. One option is what type of prediction limits I'd like to plot. Right now, there are two-sided limits. I could plot upper limits only or lower limits only if I preferred. I can also change the percentage from 95% to 90 or 99. I can also add confidence limits. Those are limits for the mean response at a particular value of x. Let's go back to no confidence limits, but keep the two-sided 95% prediction limits. On the left of the toolbar, you'll see an option that says Add Lowest Smooth. Lowest stands for Locally Weighted Scatter Plot Smoothing. It's a non-parametric smoother that we can apply to any scatter plot that gives us an idea of the underlying pattern that might be there. You can see the lowest smooth suggests a certain amount of curvature in the data. It's also, I think, fairly obvious if you look at the points that the slope is initially steep but levels out with increasing values of x. A common way to fit a curvilinear statistical model is to modify either y or x or both by raising them to some power. For example, given a random variable y, I could define y prime as being y raised to the p power if p is not equal to zero, or y prime equals the natural logarithm of y, which would correspond to a case where the power was equal to zero. This is a very useful class of transformations and often gives good statistical models for values of p between minus 5 and 5. 
We'll also apply a similar transformation to x in order to find x prime. Then fit a model where y prime is a linear function of x prime. If we change the power of x and or y in the model, we can mimic the sort of curvature you see in the smooth. For example, if I go to the slider bar that controls the power of y, I can increase it or decrease it, and you see that the model curves a little. If I bring it down to a value like minus 3, you'll see that the r squared will have gone up a little bit up to about 77.89 percent. That's not really enough curvature though for this particular data. I'll reset the model, go back to the linear model, and now try changing x. Well increasing x power is not correct, but if, as I decrease the power of x, you can see that I get a model that's quite similar to the lowest smooth. You'll also notice that the r squared goes back up, in this case to something over 86 percent. I can actually find the optimal power for x using a Box-Cox transformation if I push the OPT-X button. It says in this case that the optimal power is around minus 0 0.77 and it gave an r squared in excess of 87 percent. You can see that the fitted model now expresses y as a constant plus a slope times weeks to the minus 0 0.77 power. A somewhat simpler but almost as good model would be one where I brought that x power up to minus 0 0.5. I'm still in excess of 87 percent in the R squared and I'm getting a much easier to interpret model. Actually it says now that chlorine is a linear function of the reciprocal square root of X. That's actually a nice model. You'll notice for example as weeks gets very large chlorine will reach an asymptotic value of 0 0.30859. Let's suppose now that there's a lower acceptable limit for chlorine. Suppose that the product will not operate as intended if chlorine falls below 0 0.4. We can use this model and the prediction limits to help determine a reasonable shelf life. The way I do that is I'd go up to the prediction limits and I'd first set them to be lower 95 percent confidence bounds. I'd then find out where the lower limit intersected 0 0.4 by pushing the right mouse button and putting my check mark on locate. This will bring up a vertical crosshair and in the margin of the plot you'll see that at 25 weeks the predicted value of chlorine is 0 0.41, the lower prediction limit is 0 0.39. I'm now going to drag my crosshair to the left a little bit until that lower prediction limit reaches approximately 0 0.4. That occurs at 21 and a half weeks, which would be a reasonable shelf life to set for this product. One other thing you'll notice is that there are two points, both at 18 weeks, that don't appear to fit the model as well as some of the other points. If I'd like to see how sensitive my results are to those points, I can do one of two things. I could first go and move my check mark back to select. I could then click on one of those points and hit the plus minus button on the analysis toolbar.
the model will now be refit without that particular data point. Or I could remove this point as well and you'll see a slight change in the model. In fact, the R squared goes up to about 90 percent. Another thing I could do is I could put those points back into the model, but then go up to the Statlet toolbar and uncheck the lock points check mark. This would let me actually drag those points back so that they look more like they belong with the rest of the points. I could then push the right mouse button, go to locate, and move my cursor down until it hits around 0 0.4. The new value for X is only slightly bigger than the shelf life I got before, leading me to believe that it doesn't make much difference whether I leave those couple points where they are or decide that they're outliers and do something else with them. This curve fitting statlet is very useful for fitting curves when you have a single Y and a single X.